every time I hear about a young person dying because of hazing, it tears me up inside. Because, truthfully, I've been a part of the problem. For, for too long, I've held back from talking about the hazing I experienced out of loyalty to my fraternity, because of my fear of the consequences, and because I didn't want to be seen as a snitch. But that all ends now. Allegations of hazing are growing more disturbing by the minutes. I feel a strong need to get underneath hazing culture beyond my fraternity and my own experience. Investigating the alleged hazing allegations of hazing. Allegations of hazing. A disturbing case of hazing. I want to know why we hold on to rituals and traditions that are so dangerous. And rocks thrown at him while being dragged across the barracks. And that cause physical and emotional harm. In order to become a brother, one student was forced to grab a player's private part, swim in a kiddie pool of vomit, drink alcohol to the point where some became sick, while frat members hit or tackled them. When rites of passage rituals cross the line into potentially dangerous hazing. Those children wanted to be neurosurgeons. They wanted to be lawyers. They wanted to be everything. They were good children. And now, uh, what happened? I read about Marie and her son George in the New York Times, a mother who immigrated from Haiti to give her only child a chance at a better life. My family consists of two people, my mom, Marie, and myself. Over the years, I have come to realize the sacrifices that she has made for me in order to help me achieve something with my life. When George was about two years old, his father passed, and he became George and I. George was the love of my life. It was a Monday. And I came home around 11.30. I heard a scream. And I still hear the scream in my ears today. It was George. He said, Mom, I got accepted. George got accepted to Cornell. That was one of the happiest days for him. Friendships that live on and on, bonds that grow so strong. Brotherhood forever good, last forever. At Cornell, Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternity had this annual tradition where pledges got to haze their big brothers. And on February 25th, 2011, at around 3 a.m., the pledges got to haze George. Soon after, news broke about the hazing. They bound his wrists and ankles with zip ties and duct tape and compelled him to consume alcohol until he lost consciousness. Back at the frat house, Dedun was dumped on a couch and left to die. When you read what happened, like, I can, every time I close my eyes and I think what they did to George, and then I'm like, is this what gentlemen do? Is this what make you a man? George was the fourth hazing-related death within SAE, a fraternity with deep roots and a storied reputation covered widely by news media all over the country. 
Labeled the deadliest fraternity in the U.S., SAE has had multiple deaths from hazing and alcohol-related incidents. Sigma Alpha Epsilon, SAE, announced it closed down the local chapter. A few years after George's death, someone leaked this video made by members of SAE at the University of Oklahoma. The video went viral. It made me wonder if SAE's reckless and blatant disregard for George's body may have been rooted in the fraternity's racism. Since then, SAE has been trying to change its image. Because now, more than ever, the world needs true gentlemen. You want to be a gentleman? I have place for you. I have plenty of place for you. There are hospitals who need help. Nursing home, they are the prison. They can go and educate the prisoner. I will send them places to pledge. We call it a disease because it infects your mindset. So if you have an infectious disease and you don't do anything to it, what does it become? An epidemic. Hazing is clearly a systemic force as opposed to a series of isolated incidents. It's way too common, and the incidents are similar to each other over time and across geography. This isn't a chapter problem. It's not an individual problem. It's a problem of organizational culture. Either the organizations don't want to stop hazing, or they don't know how. The effects are still daunting. The evil is still haunting. They still laugh and implore it. Hazing is sad that it won't end. When I started out on this journey, I feared that I was betraying my brothers by making this film and breaking my silence. After speaking to so many parents who have lost their children and other victims of hazing, I realize now that it's our silence that's an act of betrayal. <laughs>